we're back on the NPH Hour here on News Talk, Saga 960 AM. I'm your host, Jason Tong. One focus I've had on this show has been to invite former players no longer playing the game onto the show to talk about life after basketball. But never have I had someone in their 20s talk about life after basketball. So this is a special chat with Jonathan Cabongo, who is wise beyond his years and with a perspective that he wants young players to hear. Jonathan Cabongo, former NCAA student athlete, Virginia Tech graduate with a creative writing degree, now fully transitioned to hip hop artist. Jonathan, first question about academics. So despite the injuries, Virginia Tech honored your educational commitment. And you're still working away right now. I mean, when you talk about student athlete, you had the athlete part taken away earlier than you expected, but you're going full, full bore at the student part, aren't you? Yeah, man. Honestly, I'm extremely grateful for it. Um, You know, not a lot of people get that opportunity, especially after, you know, your, your time's up athletically and, you know, um, it's time to just hang up the sneaker. So I'm just grateful that I got the opportunity to just maintain my scholarship, um, get a great education. I actually got an academic scholarship to do um, English to do an English master's and basically what I'm going to be doing is um, for this master's it'll just be I mean my particular thesis would be just taking a lot of you know um, just renowned you know works of British literature and taking some narrative and concept rap albums and doing like comparative analysis to kind of show like the similarities despite them being in like different worlds and Mm -hmm. you know using different mediums so um, I just really want to show how a lot of these rap albums are very you know rich in, in, in um, literary devices. So um, it's something I'm very passionate about and I'm grateful for the opportunity. And without basketball, I probably would have not got the chance to do it. So your first major injury happened when you were 16 and, and so many young players go through that at different times in their life. Can, can you just take us back? You know, what was the injury? How did it happen? And, and what did you turn to in order to get through that time? Yeah, so um, it was live period my sophomore year. Um, I was playing for Boo Williams, and we were in the semifinals of this tournament, winning by a lot. Team was frustrated. I'm on a fast break. I go up for a dunk, and dude, you know, was pretty frustrated and just throws me to the ground. So I land straight on my back, kind of, you know, black out for a second, and, like, you know, sat out the rest of that tournament, couldn't really walk that well. And then um, basically when I got back, Um, to Huntington, because I was at Huntington Prep at the time. When I got back and saw the doctors, um, it it didn't look like anything serious to them at that time, right? It was just back spasms. So I wasn't really that scared. But as time went on, you know, it it started to show that it was a little bit more than back spasms. And I sit up the whole year and then come back my last year of high school, um, where I played at Thorn Lee the last year. And my back still wasn't in good shape. One of the things that um, Virginia Tech really emphasized was that they knew I was going through what I was going through and they were trying to prioritize my health. So, you know, Coach Buzz and Coach Jamie, they did a good job saying like, look, when you get down here, I got there early in the summer. They didn't let me touch a basketball for six weeks. Like I was just doing rehab multiple times a day, lifting, getting stronger. And, you know, it, it did feel like I was improving. Got to the end of the season and I'm trying to work out and I just can't. Like, I, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, just get shots up. And it's just like, I, I can't, I'm trying to get up and down the court. And like, I'm good one day. And then it's just very bad the next. And like, it, and then the day after it's like, I can't even do anything. Right. So basically, um, I find out I have a torn labrum in my hip. And uh, they tell me I need to get surgery and repair it and um, just uh, reform um, certain bones in my hip. And um, when I went back and got an MRI, like around November of my um, sophomore year, they said, okay, you have a degenerative disc. You can't really do anything about that, but adjust your lifestyle. And, you know, just thinking about all the things long-term, thinking about what I would want for myself in a career, how I'd want to feel in a career. I said, okay, I think the best decision for me, you know, to take right now is to just stop playing basketball and that's why that passion helped me because I knew okay well if I'd never played basketball again I do have a passion for something else let's get into that because that's a big thing that that I want to hit on right there is there's such a fine line between chasing the basketball dream 
and putting everything you have into achieving those goals, but also ensuring you have a backup plan. And some people, and especially young young kids, and, and it makes sense, just don't understand how to kind of break that up. You know, do you, do you have any advice for young players when it comes to keeping things in perspective, chasing right. the dream full on, but then also making sure you're not putting all your eggs in one basket? That's kind of the, the purpose of the, the song that I just, that I just released. Um, it, it's, it's about keeping your dream and the reality kind of close together, you know, and, and not separating the two because at the end of the day, you know, nothing is guaranteed. And, um, you know, a lot of people have talent, probably didn't get the opportunity mm -hmm. or, you know, injuries, you know, basketball is a very, everything is situational, not even just basketball, you know? And like, at the end of the day, um, it could just be very dangerous, not even just, you know, um, physically, but like emotionally to put all your eggs in one basket because it can crush you. And a lot, and a lot of people don't really find any purpose outside of a sport sometimes. And, you know, you have a whole life ahead of you. So um, losing your purpose at a young age is not pretty ideal for any human being. How much of your perspective in that and clarity came from your older brother, Mike, and, mm -hmm. and what he went through as being, you know, the next one out of Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then the NCAA really made Mike one of many, mm -hmm. um, uh, an example out of him, right? This is a giant institution that just decided, okay, you know what, we're, we're, we're going to make this kid suffer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you saw that firsthand. So mm -hmm. how much did that help you with your own clarity? I mean, he's he's a resilient guy, you know, and I think that's something I inherited, you know, it's just that resiliency to, you know, to just keep going and, and just keep, you know, pushing for what it is you think your purpose is. And, um, you know, Mike loves the game and, you know, he still plays the game to this day and he's, he's still pushing and he's still fighting and he's still working. And that's the type of mentality that, you know, I think um, I needed in order to push, you know, um, beyond basketball because, you know, it's 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 the end of something, but, you know, something else has to start. And, you know, it's not always easy, you know, to, to walk into new beginnings. So um, that mentality is essential because sometimes it can just be frightening to feel like you can do something else or like you can fit in another lane. And um, yeah, man, it's just that resiliency that I feel like I witnessed him have that really helped me. Full disclosure, John and I go way back. We first met about a decade ago. I went down to Blake Street in Toronto to film his older brother, Mike, and Jonathan made his Canadian national television debut as, as young Mike back then. Uh, I had a little vision for the TV feature. And, you know, I just want to, like, what do you remember about that day uh, Man, 10 years ago? That was such a big day. I, like, I, I will never forget that day. I was, I knew it was happening and I was waiting for it all night. And I woke up, I'm like, today's the day we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to make the video. I'm going to be on. I'm going to be on the score. You know, everyone's <laughs> going to come play runs. It was, it was a great day, man. I feel like, you know, um, Eastview was so alive that day. Blake Street was so alive that day. Um, you know, a moment that I feel like everybody from the, the area will remember. Um, and, yeah, man, like, I'm, I'm glad you captured it because that, that is a very um, monumental moment in, in my life. And I'm sure it wasn't, you know, a lot of other people's lives. And, yeah, I mean, capturing it definitely allows me to just, or allows everybody involved to just revisit it and kind of just, you know, smile at the past. Now it's time for you to give back. You know, what, what advice would you pass on to a young kid right now, um, you know, coming up either in the game or not in the game, just kind of in this pandemic that we're hopefully coming out of now, you know, what, what advice would you pass on to, to, to kind of say to, to maybe young Mike, <laughs> young John and mm. talking to somebody right now mm. I would say um, find your purpose before you find a passion because I because I, that's, I, no, I, that's that's good let that sink in for a second man yeah and, and honestly I just feel like I'm, I'm 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 realizing that more and more as I get older because you know um, sometimes passions are fleeting and sometimes you know um, passions do disappoint and you need a purpose. And I think that, you know, a lot of people that have a strong purpose, regardless of how things are going with their passions, because once you have your purpose, 
it's something that can't be taken away from me, mm. right? And 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 even if a passion's taken away from me, you know, like like myself, like if if I have a certain passion and it kind of goes away because I know who I am, because I know what I'm here for, I could just transfer that energy and that focus into something else. That's wonderful stuff, man. And that's, uh, you know, I had one dropped on me a couple months ago that your purpose is your body armor. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter what anybody says, you know, as long as you know your purpose and you're continuing to make steps to follow that purpose, doesn't matter what people say or what people think mm. because you have your purpose. And that goes hand in hand with what you just said right there, man. And, and our mutual friend, Jamie McNeely used to be a coach of yours you know, he said to me, I was talking to him today. He said, point me to someone who doesn't like JK. And it's probably somebody you and I wouldn't like. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with the knowledge and fight that you have and the support of the massive community, multiple cities, anybody who's, who's come across Jonathan Cabongo, I know you'll continue to do special things and, and most importantly, uplift others with your words and your music. You know, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for coming on today. We look forward to all the amazing things you had of, ahead of you right now in your life. Mm. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. You can find Jonathan's music on his Instagram page at john.cabongo. But as you heard, he is not betting at all on his music career going forward. With his energy on a master's degree, there's no telling where his future will take him. But one thing is for sure, he wouldn't have got there without the dedication he used to pursue a higher education through the sport of basketball. We have one more guest coming your way, someone whose family came to Canada to escape war in their home country, who then used basketball to travel back around the world and represent that same country in international competition while becoming a champion and a family man along the way. Dayon Kravich is up next on the MPH Hour here on News Talk Saga, 960 AM.